Hello, good day again. Welcome back to GERTC videos. Daily supply of solutions to engineering problems. If you like what you see, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever we have new videos. Okay, today we will discuss part 2 of the series, Bolted Connection, particularly Tension Member. Bolted Connection. In part 1, we discussed the uh, capacity based on gross area yielding and net area rupture. So in this part, we will discuss the capacity based on the following, the bolt shear strength and the bearing at bolt holes. By part 3, we will discuss black shear. I will have this in part 3. So part 2, bolt shear strength and bearing at bolt holes. Holes. So once again, we'll be navigating also, uh, we'll be referring uh, core requirements here in our GERTC.online. So here you can find uh, useful references. No? So we will be adding more contents on this. So as of now, the contents, we have plane spherical uh, trigonometry, plane geometry. We also have sample problems here. You can find sample problems here. For example, in steel design, we have our... Uh, tension member, example one, for example, uh, medyo hindi pa to kompleto talaga. So we have here sample problems. You can click to see the solution. That. We have plenty of sample problems here. Okay. Or you can uh, have here, I have recently added sample problems here. Uh, here in uh, bolted connection. Example 13 or example 15, for example. Okay, example 15 uh, that is black shear strength. Right, you can click here to show or hide the solution. So, yeah, this is for free. This is for free. So, this is designed. So, kasi lahat ngayon gobagamit na ng gadget, particularly phone, no? Samsung or uh, Android or Apple. This is uh, adaptive. Any device, this will automatically design to so any device na gagamitin nyo. Okay. So, let's go back to our problem. So, this is our problem. So, W plans. So, I hope you have watched the part 1. Very important na panapanood nyo yung part 1. So, we have here our tension member, Y plans connected uh, to a column, for example, uh, by 12 volts and a gasset plate. So we will assume that the welding of the gasset plate to the column is adequate. Alright, so we are going to find the allowable and the sign strength based on all possible modes of failure. We are given the bolt diameter 16mm, the hole diameter. I have already explained this in part 1. I hope you, will have, you find time to watch part 1. The gasset plate thickness and so on and so forth. The, the distances S1, S2, S3. The properties of the wide flange section. Okay, and we already have solved the capacity based on gross area yielding. This is the design strength and the allowable strength. And we also have solved the capacity based on net area rupture of the wide flange section. And in this, we use two methods in solving the shear lag factor. First, we use the simple case 7, wherein the flange is connected with three or more fasteners per line. Here, there are four lines. Four lines in the direction of the loading. One, two, three, and the other at the back. Four. And there are three fasteners. And we're in here, uh, the uh, criteria is BF is less than two-thirds of D. Okay, so we got the value, we use the value of 0.85 as our shear lag factor. And then we also use this one. Because here it says that if you, the shear lag factor is calculated per case 2, the larger value is permitted to be used. No? The larger value if you will use case 2. So, ginamit natin yung case 2 dito. This is our case number 2. Okay. Anyway. So, case 2, wherein your barred X is the distance from the plane of connection to the centroid of the connected part. 
This is our member. We divide it into two. We located the centroid. We use the Varinius theorem. And L is the length here. You notice that, at that as L increases, this will become smaller. So therefore, it will become U bigger. U will become bigger if L increases. So if there are four lines of bolts, four bolts in the direction of load, L will become, of course, obviously bigger. This will become even bigger. Uh, because this will be smaller if L increases. Okay. So now, now let's move on. Let's compute the capacity based on the bolt shear strength. Bolt shear strength. Actually, uh, bolt shear strength is a direct substitution lang. Okay, it will depend on the type of bolt and whether it is type uh, X or type X. And so let's go to the code first. Let's navigate uh, here, bolts and threaded parts. All right. So basically, there are two types of connection. We have bearing type and slip critical uh, joint. So the bearing type, shear loads can be transferred between two structural elements either by bearing type connection or by slip critical connection. The slip critical connection depends on friction between elements. Friction between elements. While the bearing type, uh, most connections we have are bearing type. Depends, okay, all bearing type connections is one in which the bolts are in shear because there is no significant or uh, there is not significant enough friction in the joint to prevent slip. And there are two major classifications of bearing type connection. We have the type M. The type N wherein the thread is included. Connections with threads in the threads uh, in the shear plane. This is our shear plane. So there are threads there. And type X are connections without threads in the shear plane. So when there is no thread here. Alright, bearing type and slip critical. Ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Para maintindihan natin, imagine a piece of paper. Nagay natin sa table, wooden table. Okay? So, let's say this is a piece of paper. So, if you if you will pull this one, so there are two ways to connect this paper onto this table. One is you can put nails or tacks. Yeah? So, when you pull this one, the shear or the, the load is transferred to the bolt and or to the nail as shear. Actually, shear and bearing. Right? So, probably, if this is just a paper, uh, the, uh, the, the, the paper will simply shear off. Okay? So, that's the strength relies on the bearing between the bolt. Uh, for example, this is a thin sheet of metal. So another possible failure is the shear of this nail or the tax. Okay, another way to connect that is to... Put a heavy load on top of this metal sheet. For example, you will put here a heavy block of metal. So we, okay, that will resist or provide resistance to a pull P here. And the resistance is uh, provided by the friction. This is the normal force and this is the friction. This is an example of a slip critical connection. Wherein the friction will uh, give resistance to the force P. We know that the maximum available friction is equal to mu n, just like that one, right? So the bolted, the slip critical, and the bearing type connection. All right, what does the code? What are the code provisions for this case? Let's go back here. Slip critical and bolted. So this is it. Rm. Okay, tension and shearing strength of bolts in uh, unthreaded parts. Okay, so the design tension or shear strength PRN and the allowable tension or shear strength RN over omega of a snug, tightened, or pre-tension high strength bolt or threaded parts shall be determined by this formula. RN is equal to FN times AB. So what are these quantities here? By the way, the reduction factor for LRFD is 0.75 and the ASD is 2. By the way, if you have uh, if you have noticed, if you multiply uh, phi and omega, it will always give you 1.5. Take note of that. That's why if this is 0.9, this is 1.67. 
okay? Point seventy five and uh, two. Fn is the normal tensile Fnt or shearing shear stress Fnb. Fnt and Fnb is given on this table. A three o seven volts. Okay, the normal tensile stress is three ten, and for normal uh, sorry nominal sorry nominal ladder nominal shear stress bearing type is one six five. Okay, our ball is uh, let's go back first. Our ball is eight three two five volts with uh, threads excluded from shear plates. Threads excluded from shear plates. Okay, so here it is. Eight three two five with threads excluded from shear plates. Okay, so the nominal shear stress is four hundred fifty seven mega pascal fnv capital f sub nv fnv so we will use that value actually i already gave that in the problem so we have here fnv is 457 okay now what is ab here ab is the nominal unthreaded body area of bolt or threaded part unthreaded huh? Unthreaded value of uh, body area of both or threaded part. Okay, so that is in square mm nominal AB. That's for one volt. Okay, so your phi is 0.75. Your uh, lambda is uh, sorry, omega is uh, 2.0. Your bolt area is equal to pi over 4 times the bolt diameter squared. All right, we know the bolt diameter is 16 mm given in the problem 16 mm so this will give you 201.062 square mm so your rn is equal to fnv times ab your fnv is equal to 457 your ab is equal to this right and then take note that there are 12 bolts in single shear 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then 6 also at the bottom so this will be multiplied by 12 so this is the nominal shear resistance of the 12 volts 1102.624 okay very simple finally the design strength is phi rn when in our phi is 0.75 so that gives you sorry 826.968 an example of that the condition is such that your rn or ru must not exceed PPN or PRN. So this can be R, other, right? And your RU or PU is equal to 1.2. If, for example, dead and live combination, 1.2 dead plus 1.6. Right? And the allowable strength is equal to RN over omega. Omega is 2.0. Substituting the values, giving us 551.312. Example of that is that your RR or P or R, not does it matter, is equal to RN, shall not exceed RN over omega. And your load is the combination of dead and live, double dead and live only, so you will use this combination. Okay, so that is based on all shear step. Very simple, very simple. Again, reminding you, I hope you have watched the part one so that you will be fully, you can fully understand what I've been talking here about this load combination. In part one, I discussed the load combination, the load factors for LRXD and for ASD. I discussed that in part one. And by the way, before I continue, uh, let me uh, introduce you uh, to our newly published book. You just click this GRTC box here. And then I can direct you to my previous site. Click here, DITG Books. Alright, so this is our new book. I will just publish this this today. Uh, it's out on the market already uh, today. Today, uh, uh, at recording time, this, uh, today is uh, April, uh, no, sorry, May 13th. Practice problems in civil engineering. This is the first 
half of the review. All subjects are included for the first half of the review. Okay, and then these are the contents. And by the way, uh, let me tell you that we intentionally have this background in some of the pages. This is to discourage piracy. Please don't buy pirated books. There are lots of pirated books available even in Lazada. Meron din. Okay, you can buy this at our official Lazada page. Okay, Lazada store. Ayan. Okay. And uh, I think, okay, it's here already. The practice problems in civil engineering is already here. You can order that. That's 650. That's uh, 700 plus pages and over 1,000 solved problems. Okay? So, just click on that. And you can find our other books here. Available in Lazada. Okay? So, I'll put this back lang muna. Alright, let's continue. Now, let's have the other uh, mode of failure. Right? This time, based on viewing at bolt holes in the white plants only. Okay? Why white plants? Because if you notice, uh, white plants only, because there are two areas to be considered here to be verified that is the gusset plate and the plants but the gusset plate is thicker than the plants the gusset plate is 12 mm while the plants of our uh, section is only 10.3 mm so the bearing will be governed at the plants of the white uh, of the section okay let's base it from there okay looking for it uh, sorry. All right. So here it is. Okay. This is it. So this is our flange, and the bearing is. It will depend on these distances LC1, LC2. Okay. The edge distance and the distance between adjacent bolt. And in computing these distances, we will not use the effective bolt. We will not add the 2 mm from the bolt hole. So we will be using the bolt hole itself. We will just be using the bolt hole. So we will have 18 mm. The bolt diameter is 16 mm. The hole size is 18 mm. Okay, let us read first the code requirements for that. Okay, let's go to this. Uh, okay, uh, you can find it here. Uh, bolts and threaded part. Okay, so somewhere here, this is the code requirement. Okay, bearing strength at bolt holes. The available bearing strength PRN and RN over omega at both holes shall be determined by the limit states as follows, or bearing as follows. Again, our reduction factor for LRFD is 0.75 and the uh, factor of safety for ASD is 2. So there are two types here for the bolt. Uh, for bolt in connection with standard, oversized, and short slotted holes, okay, when design deformation of the bolt hole at service load is a design consideration, this is your RN. And when the deformation at the bolt hole at service load is not a design consideration, this is our RN. Only the difference of 1.2 here, this will be 1.5, this is 2.4, and this is 3. Uh, let's assume that the deformation at the bolt hole at service load is not a design consideration. So we, we will use this formula here. 1.5 LCTFU and shall not exceed 3 DTFU. Now what are these notations? Okay, D. D is the nominal bolt diameter. 
Stick to bolt diameter, not hole. Bolt diameter. FE, of course, is the tensile strength of the connected material. In this case, uh, 400 MPa. LC, look. LC is the clear distance in the direction of force, all right? Between the edge of the hole, of the hole, and the edge of the adjusted hole or edge of the material. It's not edge of the material or edge of the adjacent hole. And T is the thickness of the connected part. In this, in this case, the TF, the thickness of the plants. All right, so ito yun, LC. LC, so distance from the edge of the hole to the edge in the direction of the applied load. So this is for this bolt, no? and for this bolt, ito. So what we will do is we will compute the bearing strength of each hole. Hole. All right. So let's compute first LC1. LC1 is equal to S1. S1 is from the edge to the center. So we will deduct one half of the bolt hole only. One half of 18 mm. Right? So 40 minus uh, 9. That will be 31 mm. Our LC2 is uh, S2 minus one hole diameter. So that will be 80 minus 18. So that it will give us 62 mm. This is also LC2, the same value, LC2. And that will be typical uh, to all the bolts. And of course, our T is the thickness of the flange. The flange thickness in this case, 10.3 mm. Okay, so from the equation I have just shown you, so what we will do, uh, we will do it, do this one by one. No? The 1.5 LCTFU must not exceed 3 DTFU. You notice that the right side, this right side here is constant. It will just depend on the bolt diameter, thickness, and FU. Whereas this one will depend on LC. So the best thing to do here is to compute this first and that one also. Okay, for our LC1, 1.5, okay, 1.5 LC1 TFU, the value is 191.58 kN. For our LC2, for this bolt and for this bolt, that will be 1.5 LC2 T times FU giving us 383.16. And let's compute this. 3D TFU. This will give us, D is the diameter of the bolt, DB. Right? Diameter of the bolt. Okay, that was stated in the code. 197. As you can see, shall not exceed. So meaning, we cannot use this for bolt, bolts, these two bolts. Okay. Uh, what we will use for this bolt here is this one. It's okay. But for these two bolts here, we will use this value. You get that? Alright, so this is it. So your Rn is equal to, okay, this is this is for the edge, the, the last bolt here, 1.5 LC1 TF plus 2 times this one here, this quantity here. I will not use this one because according to this, it must not exceed this value here. So that is clear. Times 2 because there are two bolts, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Okay, and take note, this is only for this line. And take note, there are four lines. One, two, the other two is at the bottom of the, at the other flange. So that everything here should be multiplied by four. Okay, all of this must be multiplied by four. Because there are one, this quantity here is only for one line. We know that there are four lines. Right? So times 4, that will give us 2348.4 kN. Of course, our phi and omega, 0.75 for phi and 2.004 omega. Finally, the design strength is phi Rn that gives us 1761.3 kN. Again, just to show you how to apply that, so your RU or PU must not exceed PRM. This can be R. It has okay. It can be R. Pinapalitan. Okay. And the allowable is RN over omega. 
Again, if you have dead and live load only, then that will be Okay. So, that's it. So, this is based on viewing uh, holes in the W section. So, if you are to consider the bearing on the white plant section, what will differ here is the thickness. The T will be 12 mm, the thickness of the gasset plate. Here, our T is uh, uh, TF. Uh, this is 12 mm, the gasset plate is 12. If we will use 12, obviously, this will be large, bigger. It will give you a bigger value. Alright, so we use the thinner part. 10.3 Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this uh, video uh, I will have the last part the black here Okay, we will have it on part 3 Okay, so thank you so much for watching and again, please don't forget to subscribe and visit our new website all of these are free, so just to show you some navigation here, let's navigate some topics here. For example, plane geometry, we have quadrilateral, and that will lead you to quadrilateral. There are lots of formulas and principles there. Uh, I don't have lots of examples yet here, but I have more examples in uh, our steel design. No? If you have tension members, example number five, Alright, you will have this example. And there is a solution here. By the way, uh, I am using MathCAD, so the substitution of the values are not shown anymore. Just refer to the notations to the notations presented. And I have another newly added item here in uh, bolted connection. For example, example number 14. Alright. The solution can be seen directly in this page. And just click this to show or hide your solution. Right? So, again, thank you so much for watching. We'll have part 3 later.